Well, I think you've got to recognise that this was a steel plant of 13,000 people. It was an integrated steel plant, which meant that this, they started at the bottom end with iron ore, went through the blast furnaces, through the open blast furnaces, Bessemer converters, all of which were areas of making steel, and they were dealing with red hot metal. There were actually two processes employed in uh, iron and steel making. The one method was um, time consuming, uh, but it produced a better quality steel. That was the um, Siemens Martin open hearth process. It took about eight hours to make uh, uh, 100 tonnes of steel. But also employed was the 1856 discovery by Bessemer of producing bulk volume steel. Now, this could produce uh, 10 tonnes in, say, 40 minutes, which was a marked difference to the open hearth grade of steel. Yet the quality wasn't as good because you were actually blowing air into the molten metal, you were also blowing in nitrogen, and nitrogen for uh, ductility, from a ductility point of view, is a, is a no-go area. You must reduce the nitrogen content. So it was, it was one of quality. Some qualities could um, handle high nitrogen um, steels, but others couldn't. So it was a matter of running both processes alongside each other. Uh, the one thing with steel making, it makes a lot of scrap. And the one thing with iron scrap and steel scrap, it can all go back in the furnace and be remade again. So most of the open hearths were scrap, scrap furnaces. The Bessemer process was the main thing up until the 1960s, and then they brought in this LD process, slightly different. But the LD was making it from molten iron. Because it was an integrated process, you had a blast furnace, two types of uh, steel making process, the Bessemer and open hearth process. You had the uh, blooming mill, which uh, reduced ingots down to a, a manageable size. You had the continuous hot strip mill, which was essentially the basic hot roll coil product to supply sheet for the automotive market. And Ebervale was one of the first outside the states to employ this process. Um, the, the continuous hot strip mill is now an integral part of any major works, but that was the major step forward and that um, the, the concept was brought to Abbeville in 1936, commissioned in 1938, and went on to be a major player uh, with this works until 1977. The works from 1938 on obviously brought all this new American technology in. Uh, we were making coils of steel, whereas nobody else in Britain or even Europe were making coils. It was a much quicker process. Everything suddenly became continuous where you could tack one coil onto the, the back end of one coil onto the front end of the next one. And we, we had continuous process, so tonnages shot up. I actually um, was taken from the metallurgical department and I was um, given the job as a, a production manager, um, essentially in the rolling end. And what we what was done at the time, Ebervale was um, given uh, a double reduction process, which is the first really outside the US. Um, so we had to develop that. Um, there were many problems which arose. It was a new plant. Um, redundant members in the heavy end were redeployed into the finishing end. We were all a little bit inexperienced uh, and it was um, because uh, it was a new process. There were many, many difficulties, but uh, we survived.
tin plate for uh, can making and a variety of other things, galvanized materials. It also supplied an element of um, silicon steels, which were for the electrical industry. For, uh, and of course, uh, sheet was further processed for white goods. And the whole uh, domestic scene was altering in that sense, and it was a driver in deciding what products would be manufactured from Everville. I had experience in, in most parts of the plant, virtually from a metallurgical point of view. Um, we had uh, representatives of the department who were located in various parts of the works. The heavy end was a limited involvement because essentially it was mainly uh, of a chemical nature and metallurgically the involvement occurred essentially from hot strip rolling to the, f to the finished product. Undoubtedly um, from the, probably the 50s right through to the day we closed we were at the top of the tree. Our quality, our outputs, our production records, we broke records right up until the week we closed. In fact, uh, in the last few weeks before closure in 2002, and that was the, the, the coal mill end then, obviously the, the hot mill had closed some time before, the director at the time, Marianne Oudeman, who was from Holland, told us that we were outperforming Trostre and the plant in Holland. Uh, our workforce produced quality, uh, yield right up until the final day the plant closed. And the rumour goes that in years gone by that slab produced in Ebervale uh, had been used to save other sites, not just in this country but abroad, being stamped that they were made elsewhere um, because our quality was so much better than anyone else. You've got to remember the site was put here, the modern works in 1938 uh, was put here because uh, one of the things was we had raw materials. We had the best, we had the best water, the best limestone, the best uh, trees to make cork, we had coal, we had everything. And so our quality was literally second to none.